Hello and welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Sergei Kabashnyuk. This is Michal Wala. Uh, we are Red Hatters and today we are going to talk about developers, uh, development environment and development tools which help can help you and make your development easy a bit later. And uh, as this tool we will we're going to talk about Eclipse Share, which is an open source project, and we are a contributors of this project, which aims to provide fast, easy to use, extensible platform for hybrid cloud development. It uh, provides Kubernetes based developer workspaces. We will talk a bit uh, later what is it, but it's allow you leverage fully containerized developer workspaces and bring your application to a cloud and all build tools. It is based uh, on the new best of the art uh, open source editor uh, Eclipse Tia. Uh, it has a great compatibility with this code extension. So, uh, if almost a big set of the this code existed plugins is available to you. And as the major uh, features of this presentation, we are going to talk about dev file which is um, an attempt to provide a standard or format where you can define all tools uh, and all things which you are going to use in develop during development as a single file, which is trying to be as small as possible, uh, so make, make it to a bit easy to use. So let's uh, uh, talk a bit more about a few major concepts, so Kubernetes with zero effort, what does it mean? Uh, Eclipse Check has the a nice features to to make the URLs uh, which you can embed to your issues, uh, uh, your readmes, which just uh, uh, a browser, you can click on it and get uh, the fully development environment just in your browser without and needing to install anything, without need to explain someone which steps they need to provide, uh, need to make to have the same environment. So this is, we call it factories. Um, another uh, feature is it's uh, uh, a dev file, development environment as a code. So you, if you are able to define uh, your development environment as a, as a file, you can put it in a source code. It can be then branched, can be pull requested, and uh, it basically it provide it uh, fix the issue. But it works on one machine, but someone does not. Uh, it will fix the uh, issue like uh, wrong version of some some tools and dependency issues. Stuff like that. Uh, it protects your source code since, since source codes remained in the cloud and you are not able to forget, and it's not checked out locally, you are not able to forget it with laptop in a bar. So less work for your IT department. Uh, they can make the uh, old knowledge to secure the cloud, secure your clo uh, code. It's, it's maybe less that important for open source project, but for uh, companies which are more closed, like uh, pharmaceutical or some of something like that. That might be very, very uh, important. Uh, extensible platform, uh, as I said, uh, Eclipse Share is uh, based uh, on Eclipse Tia, which has a great uh, extensibility plugin support uh, uh, with VS Code, so you can bring your extension here and use the existed one. Um, so it provides Kubernetes-based uh, workspaces. Uh, what does it mean? So uh, it's a sandbox, and you, everything is running on the Kubernetes and OpenShift, where you can combine together application runtimes like a, a Java, Node, uh, like Tomcats, like servers. Can provide the uh, as a part of workspace build tools like Madden, uh, like Gradle, like Node, stuff like that. It provides uh, what you expect from the EDEs, uh, or provides the code assistance support and other things like a, uh, OpenShift connector, which Artems uh, previously shows you, uh, and obviously source code, which is a uh, source of all our developments. 
So you can imagine uh, the pod which is representing workspace is running separately tools needed for you, uh, like Git, like uh, other things, build tools, uh, Maven, as I said, uh, runtime, Java runtime, for instance, testing tool, which you might like regular uh, flow, code, build, test, run, debug, and deploy. So everything that is provided as a part of workspace port. And of course, all of that needs the source code because you, you are producing changes. Uh, all these tools might want to uh, need the source code. So we are mounting the source code to the, each of those tools. You'll show all containers. And uh, uh, so the, 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 the key concept, the, all these tools are packaged uh, with, uh, as a containers and it has the, uh, quite a big bunch of benefits. So zero dependency installation, like if you need to uh, Maven, it comes with Java. So you don't need to figure out which version of Java you need to just require in the Maven. Uh, isolated execution, so one tool can't affect another tool, uh, all in life cycle and upgrade. So it's just, you don't need to find there the tools exist, you just, uh, upgrade the version of container, it it comes to, to you. Uh, as part of the open source project Eclipse, uh, we are trying to use uh, community-based images, so uh, community knows better when we are, how to provide the runtime for Node, the example of Go application or, or Java, so we are trying to leverage the upstream's images first, if we could do that, um, because we think they are no better than I, we are. So simple packaging uh, in this world, like a lot of people know, so what is the container images? Uh, scalable, so you can expect uh, to leverage all benefits of the cloud in the scalability world. Uh, yes, as I said, the uh, new, uh, new editor, uh, from, from our opinion, is the best op open source editor at this moment. Um, uh, so uh, it also uh, comes with the, as a container with all these dependencies, but you uh, should not think that's the only one editor that is possible. So as I said, uh, we are tr trying to provide extensible platform and you can use another alternative editors like Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, Maybe you're another one, but the Jupyter, I, I, I saw that uh, contribution. Um, it's extensible, uh, and extensibility comes from the standards. Uh, language server protocol is one of the, the standards which allows to bring you language-specific features to your editors. And if someone writes already a language server, uh, language server for some languages, it can be uh, connected to Eclipse Chair as well as uh, DS Code, Atom, all editors which support language server protocol. And same thing for uh, debug adapter protocol. <coughs> as I said, uh, it has a great compatibility with DS Code extensions, so more and more extensions are confirmed, works successfully. Um, yeah, so you can enable uh, s enable plugins uh, during working uh, session, as you expect uh, the things in, in editing in the S code. Um, uh, the extension packages with the dependencies, so do you don't need to think about to install something extra. Uh, this list of plugins are customizable uh, with plugin registry, so if you have the, some private installations, some private packages, some private containers, you can add the new one or remove the existed one. So that's fully customizable, uh, no worry about that. And uh, uh, dev file, so uh, dev file is the thing which we think can provide you development environment as a code. Uh, it's an uh, attempt to standardize uh, the features, some of the main Key things which you expect here is the sources, projects, can be multiple, can be probably zero uh, soon. Uh, 
editors, uh, like uh, the standard editor by default is Eclipse Thea, but as I said, you can replace it with in other editors like Eclipse Jupyter. And uh, tools, uh, of course, uh, like build tools, runtime tools, runtime environments, uh, you can add your uh, Kubernetes application uh, and uses this runtime environment and commands. So commands that you are uh, often used to build, test, run, debug, deploy, etc. Let's take a look how it looks like. So it's a, like a, one of the basics. Uh, as a one, it has the sources. Is this from the two? Do you see? Is everything okay? You can see it. So starting from two, uh, explaining uh, components. Here are the uh, Java uh, Java support and Docker image used uh, as a runtime. Uh, it's emitting commands just because it will be looks quite long. But later, I think we will see some examples with commands. So uh, you should think about uh, uh, a workspace like a puzzles when you are combining everything you need in during development as a container, you get your application, you add something, some, some piece of the puzzles as a container. And uh, of course, as I said, uh, we aim to provide uh, extensible platform for cloud development teams. Uh, if you define your uh, workspace as a file, put it uh, in the source code, it manages your consistency. Uh, so again, but it works on my machine and someone doesn't, it, it doesn't work. It's reproducible. You need to just click on a link. Uh, simple to share. You can share the link. You can share a link to a file. You can share the factory link. And uh, extensible, uh, you can bring your images, uh, your tools. It's easy to bring the plugins to Eclipse Tier. It's easy to kind of easy bring the new language servers because anyway it's a standard so you don't need to rewrite a, a tool each time if you're building new language. It's time to demo. Okay. So now you know the theory. So hopefully now let's look at Something in action. So, uh, what I want to show you is uh, like write a dev file from scratch for this sim pretty simple application. So, uh, I have used the real world demo application, and it's like a GitHub project that has defined API, and they have uh, multiple imp implementations of the backend and multi multiple front end. And uh, I, I choose the Java backend on Spring Boot and uh, JavaScript React application for the front end. And uh, later I will use the MySQL database. Uh, use the simple architecture. Basically, what I want is uh, my backend to provide some public route as well as the front end. And uh, front end application will communicate through the uh, backend public route, and later backend will communicate under the hood uh, with MySQL database. So, uh, yeah. Uh, to fasten things, I have like prepared steps. Uh, but imagine I'm writing that right now. So this is uh, like the simplest uh, valid dev file you can have. As you can see, it's uh, YAML, and it's uh, inspired by uh, Kubernetes YAML object definitions. So uh, we have some API version. Currently, this is like only one we support, but uh, we are li like ready to to uh, have more version, versions in the future, and some metadata. Currently, we have uh, uh, only the name or generate name, and uh, like workspace we, we will create from this uh, the file will be named like this. 
if you use generate name, it's uh, the the name will be like generated with some logic from from uh, from this. So as a second step, I want to add my projects, and that means the source code repositories to the workspace. And uh, I have two. I have uh, my front end, which is uh, some React application repository, and the back end, which is Spring Boot back end application. Now, the names are quite important because it's the name of the directory that the project will be cloned to, and uh, you will see that later, like what does it uh, how, how does it look in a real workspace? Uh, now the location of the repository is clear and uh, type uh, this is uh, like GitHub, Git repository on GitHub and uh, we support some more, but I'm not sure which. Oh. I can here also define uh, like a branch or a clone path, for example which is quite useful for, uh, for like Go projects, for example, if you want to clone your repository into some Go path somewhere in the container. So I have my project. Next step is uh, attributes. These are like key value pairs of some attributes for a workspace. Uh, what I'm defining here is uh, to not persist volumes, and uh, that means that if I stop the workspace, everything will be like deleted or I, I couldn't uh, get to it again. And it's basically just to think, uh, make things faster for the demo. So now the like most interesting part of the dev file, which is uh, defining the components. And uh, I would uh, like logically split the comp components to two parts. First, par first, first part uh, could be like components for, for Che, which is, for example, the editor or Che plugins. And uh, as uh, Ser Sergi told that uh, we use Chetia editor. It is the default, but uh, I'm showing here that you can basically define the editor here, and I'm using some specific version of that. Now to the plugins. Uh, I'm using the TypeScript plugin, which is like, uh, I, will, I will gain with it uh, support for, for, uh, for JavaScript, and uh, I can use uh, things like uh, code completion and code, nav code navigation and inline documentation and stuff like that. And uh, I can also set the memory limit and uh, I guess some other parameters. Uh, here I have uh, commented out the Java plugin. It's uh, just to show that uh, we can support, uh, we can like have that, but uh, also for like make thi things faster, I comment it out. Uh, yeah, uh, important thing here is that uh, all plugins are defined in a plugin registry, which we can find on GitHub. I think here. So these are like all plugins uh, we can use in uh, in uh, Che, and uh, they have some description. You can like either define your own plugin and uh, even use uh, your own uh, plugin registry with your own plugins, whatever you want. So. So, uh, Che editor and uh, Che plugins were, were like uh, components for Che, and now define the components 
from the second group and uh, these are for our, our application. So I have Java backend and uh, I, I need to build it uh, somewhere and run it somewhere, right? So I have uh, my component that I, I have named Java backend and I'm using type Docker image, which is like the, uh, I would say simplest uh, component which you can define because it has like the strict structure in the def file. <coughs> this is image that will be used for, for a component, so it will be started when I start the workspace. Memory limit for, for a container. I want to mount the sources there so I can build and run and do stuff. And important thing here is I can and I'm defining endpoint here. What does it mean is uh, basically the service and the public route will be created for this component, for this container. And uh, I've named it the backend for port 8080 because 8080 is where my application will run. And uh, I want it to be public because I need to contact, uh, like communicate with uh, Java backend from, uh, from the front end application. Next, I have a front end component. And uh, just to show you, we support different types. I uh, have this uh, type of Kubernetes. Again, I want to mount the sources there. And uh, here you can see that I have basically a definition of uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes pod, which is like standard Kubernetes object. In the real workspace, it uh, will not be the pod, and I will show you how, how it looks like later. So, but the definition is uh, here one pod, which has one container named Node.js, some image, some resources, memory limitations, stuff like that. Um, so I have my components for uh, backend and the frontend. Now I want to define some uh, commands I, uh, like which I will be able to use and will be able to run. And uh, I have just uh, two simple ones. One is for running the backend application and second is for running the frontend application. Now here I have the actions of the, of the command. And uh, as you can see, it is an array, so it looks like we support multiple actions, but currently we support only one, but the def file is ready for more. Uh, now the work there where the command will be run is defined like, that, uh, like this. So this is like standard chair uh, environment variable, which says, uh, root of the projects, I think it's uh, slash projects. And uh, here is the backend folder, and if we scroll up, it's exactly this one. So the sources will be cloned into backend directory here. And uh, I want uh, to execute this command at this place. And I, I'm saying that uh, I want to run this command on this component, so it's exactly this one. Uh, frontend is pretty much the same. I'm just uh, going to frontend here and running different command because it's uh, JavaScript. I have uh, commented out the preview URL uh, because uh, why I comment it out, I don't know. Uh, it is like uh, 
the, the URL with port that the application will start and I can, I can go there and take a look. But uh, yeah, it will work without it as well. Uh, yeah. So as the last step, I'm adding, uh, this is a bit confusing, but this was edit, uh, MySQL component, which will be uh, used as a database for the backend. Again, type uh, of the component is simple docker image, and name is uh, MySQL. I'm using some MySQL uh, image, and uh, here important stuff that I can define environment via variables here, because for the MySQL, I need uh, to define the user password and database, and basically I can define any, anything here. Again, uh, some, uh, some uh, resource uh, limitations, and I'm defining endpoint here, which is named DB, and uh, it is again important, and we will see later why. It's for port uh, 3306, and uh, it will be discoverable, which means that uh, endpoint with uh, the name DB will be created. And by endpoint, I mean like a service in, in uh, the workspace, namespace on, in Kubernetes or OpenShift. And I don't want it to be public, so no public road will be created for the, for the component. So uh, this, is, this is my dev file. And I can use uh, the... I could use the factory API, which uh, will... look like this. It's a uh, link to Che OpenShift IO, which is like a uh, software as a service provided by, by Red Hat. And the dev file is uh, just passed there as a parameter. So if I click here, it will start the workspace. But I will cheat here a bit. And I opened my already started workspace to make things faster and working. Uh, so, this is how the workspace look like, like after after I started from the dev file. So, as you can see, I have my backend and frontend sources. Here, I have my uh, my components. I can see the uh, the plugins and the editor here, and my defined components here. And uh, here are my uh, commands. So I will write, run the backend command I defined and the frontend one. And we'll see. Are there any questions? Can you repeat it again, please? <laughs> uh, so basically, you're spawning DB inside a Docker image. What if I would like to use on an AWS service, for example? Uh, is it possible somehow? Yeah, but this would be external to like yeah. uh, running something external. Yeah. Like, of course, yes. <laughs> some hack hacking. Yeah, yeah. And basically, if you configure your application to connect some external, you can. So now some pop-up appears, and it's that uh, my backend application start listening on port 8080. So I can close this one because I don't need that. Now here's the pop-up for uh, for the front end, which is more interesting because I I didn't define any endpoint endpoint for it. 
but uh, they are can somehow detect that uh, application is listening and uh, can route it to the public. So I can open the link. And this is my front-end application. But the front-end application is not yet connected to my back-end. This is some back-end uh, publicly available. So what I want to do is uh, these are public routes for on, on, my, on my cluster. And uh, I have here my Java backend uh, host name. And I will put it right here. Like this. So now I like leave the uh, backend lock open and we will see if it communicates uh, with my backend. So I will create some post. Yeah, and it's like write some logs, so it's communicating communicating with my with my backend. But the backend is uh, now using the H2 database. So if I stop it, I just log out here. If I stop the backend, and uh, run it again. should be running. I have no data here because I lost everything. And uh, so now I will try to like connect the application, the backend to my SQL database. So uh, here I have my MySQL uh, component and I can open the terminal and I'm in the MySQL container. So I will connect to the to uh, to the database, and nothing here. So what I can do is uh, first I need to have uh, the MySQL driver in my application. like this, and I need to configure my application to connect to the database. And uh, the most important thing here is this, which is the endpoint which uh, I set to MySQL database and set it as uh, discoverable. And here are my services listed in in the in the cluster namespace and this is exactly that one so i can reach it from the java backend and uh, i can use it and it's on port 3306 and uh, of course at the database name username and the password so let's run the backend again
So my backend is running, and now I should see that uh, there are already some tables created. So. If I create some user, I can see my user here. I create some, some article. And it's here. So the backend service is now communicating with my MySQL database, and it's happening like inside the infrastructure without any public communication. So it's basically it's basically the demo. I can show you here like uh, how the how the workspace look like in the in the Kubernetes. So. Uh, Basically, the workspace is uh, just this one pod. And uh, it is, I, I, I have uh, running chair in, uh, in this namespace, so it's a bit of a mess here. So this is, the, this is the workspace pod, only one. And uh, this service and these four. And uh, for ingresses, uh, basically, all these ingresses are for the workspace. If we look uh, into the workspace, uh, I can see my, that it, it has, I think, uh, six containers. Here is the IDE. This is the machine exec, which is like executing the uh, commands on on uh, the component. And uh, here are my defined components. Uh, yeah, what else? I think uh, I think that's all. Do you want to comment something? Yeah, uh, or if I forget something, the, the links, uh, the page with the links. Uh, I mean, uh, on GitHub. On GitHub, okay. Uh, yeah, here. so uh, you can see it here, you can put the link to a dev file, like a dev file. Uh, you can use as URL a GitHub repository. So uh, we will, in case if there is no dev file there, we will run an empty uh, Thea based workspace in case if the dev file exists uh, there we can use it as a definition of your workspace you can specify a link to a branch on github uh, tag like just grab the link but you have the browser put it in the, uh, as a URL uh, you can put that uh, in your pull requests uh, I think soon we have some plugins which allows you automate this, the whole uh, fork, edit, uh, push uh, flow. So it will embed it, uh, the link for, for you. Uh, we had it in a previous version, it's still under development for the latest one. So yeah, and this is basically it. Uh, any questions? Yes. How do you um, you mean inside the chat? Yeah. 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 Uh, we have uh, we have a key cloak uh, user management, and uh, I, I showed you the single user deployment. But uh, if you deploy with a multi user, which is like the default basically, uh, you have key cloak authentication. To provide authentication, we need the open ID provider, and we use the key cloak as an open ID provider, which, like by default, and you can replace it to other. Can be used as right? Yes. Just to provide identities. Yes. Uh, OK, 
Okay, so the question basically the comparison with Vagrant. Yeah, I think it's possible to say. So, uh, yeah, that's basically not the uh, silver bullet which just sold for everything, but uh, one of the advantages you can uh, you can bring as a component your definition of your application and use it at runtime, so it will be part of your workspace actually. It will be running exactly the same thing which will be running on the production. So uh, I think you see the reference content, but you can put the reference to the actual file, which you then it means if you replace the application definition, it will automatically be there next time you're running the workspace. Yeah, uh, another thing is that uh, like if I have uh, my repository on GitHub, for example, I can put it just this link and everyone who will come like on one click have complete the workspace environment. And uh, another, another use case I would say is, uh, it was mentioned in previous talk, like you can have uh, all application life cycle like full fully in a, in a cloud, so basically you don't have to run anything locally. You have like all the deployments, code editing, build, build pipelines, everything, everything there. And uh, like the, let's say IT department can manage that and uh, developers are basically only users of it. So it's different approach. I have to say, like, I think there is like no silver, silver bullet. This is just different approach. I, I would say that uh, Eclipse Chair it's uh, a bit more bigger. It brings you an editor, also all the plugins for editors like Consent Assistant, anything you are uh, running, uh, or accepting from editors, so plugin ecosystem. Uh, that background is not something which you are going to provide. It provides you a build or test environment, or runtime environment, but it's not combining all the things together. Any other questions? Any other questions? The question is if there are any integrations with uh, other IDEs like my local IDEA, for example. Uh, I don't think so. Uh. We have only, only web IDEs and as Sergi mentioned, uh, we support uh, Jupyter Notebooks and I think some more. But the TIA is basically the default and most our efforts are there. So in, in theory, uh, you can run the SS, SSHD daemon as part of your workspace, put the, uh, some keys there and just connect it with the SSH. So I'm not sure it was. In theory. In theory. <laughs> no, no it's, it wasn't practice in the previous version, but I wouldn't say that it's, it's quite often that you are connecting local ID to uh, another ID, but uh, as part of the dev file, you can define the uh, editor-less uh, workspace, like will be no editor, and you can use just a, an application environment with commands like everything there, but no editor. Okay. Mm. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you.